Hello and welcome to another session on the techniques and methods of genetic testing. So genetic testing is a type of medical testing technology which is used for identifying uh, changes in the genetic material of an individual. There are various cases uh, or scenarios in which genetic testing could be undertaken. For example, premarital testing, wherein the couple uh, who is expected to get married is tested for any genetic uh, alterations in the gen, uh, in the DNA so that uh, an informed medical consultation could be given to such couple. Also, uh, in case of prenatal testing, wherein the fetus is suspected to have some genetic disease, uh, a genetic test could help to identify whether the mutation or the variation is there in the uh, fetus so that an informed medical decision could be taken by the family. Uh, another case could be the newborn screening, wherein the newborns who are at the risk of developing any uh, genetic disorder are tested so that appropriate medical treatment or informed decision can be taken by the family. Also, uh, it could be possible that an individual or a, uh, in a family uh, is having some genetic disease which is, uh, which, which is running in the family. So, there could be more individuals who could be carriers or uh, uh, who could be like, who could transmit the disease to future generations. So the carrier screening could be undertaken to prevent uh, the, uh, to prevent and take informed decisions uh, in case of any uh, disease which is running in the farm. And also uh, in cases of a uh, doctor suspecting some genetic disease, a uh, genetic test could be taken uh, could be undertaken so that the uh, informed or uh, appropriate treatment could be provided to the individual. So uh, there are different methods which are uh, uh, available for uh, testing the genome of an individual and these methods have different resolutions. So there could be methods which are uh, which detect the aberrations at the microscopic level or at the sub microscopic level and at the DNA sequence level. So there are uh, several techniques uh, uh, which are uh, specialized for detecting the, gen the detecting the aberrations in different type of uh, at different type of level. So uh, we will be talking about each of these techniques in future uh, slides. So uh, what are the type of genetic changes that could happen in uh, genetic material? So there could be uh, chromosomal changes or there could be changes at the DNA level. So uh, in case of chromosomal changes, there could be changes in the number of the chromosome, either there is a decrease or increase in the number of the chromosome, or there could be the structural changes in the chromosome. For example, there is a portion of chromosome which is deleted, there could be a portion of chromosome which is duplicated. So all such abnormalities could lead to changes in the genetic makeup of an individual. Uh, another could be the DNA changes which happen at the uh, sequence of the DNA. So uh, these could be divided into two categories for uh, like the point mutations wherein only one base pair is either substituted, inserted or deleted from the genome or it could be uh, in um, form of the indels wherein there could be small insertions or deletions ranging from 2 to 50 base pairs and uh, which would lead to aberrations in the genome. So uh, there are different techniques to identify or to detect different types of changes that occur in the uh, genetic material. So first of all, we'll talk about karyotyping, which is a method to determine this aberrations at the uh, chromosome level, that is the microscopic level. So under this technique, the blood is drawn from the individual. The blood cells are cultured for around two to three days. After that, the cells are arrested at the metaphase state using chemicals such as colchicine, and the cells are then stained for uh, further uh, visualization. So stains like Jimsa stain could be used. So uh, after that, the metaphase uh, spread is prepared by dropping the sample on a glass, glass slide so that all the chromosomes are spread out on the slide and can be visualized easily. easily. So after the metaphase preparation, uh, the slide is visualized under the microscope and the karyotype is then, uh, uh, the karyotype is then uh, analyzed. So this is a normal karyotype, which is uh, for a diploid human male, 
that is shown here now there could be uh, certain medical conditions uh, in in which this uh, uh, karyotyping could take place for example uh, klein filter syndrome in which there is a extra copy of x chromosome in male so to detect uh, such type of changes karyotyping is a very good technique so uh, what are the advantages of karyotyping so it is a technique which can detect large uh, numerical or the structural abnormalities in the chromosome uh, and also karyotyping is easily accessible and quite affordable however there are certain limitations that the chromosomal preparations that uh, uh, that are performed are uh, depends upon the type of the tissue that is taken and also it is a very labor intensive uh, technique and a low throughput technique so it uh, it takes days to perform uh, like karyotype of to prepare the karyotype of single individual also the limit of uh, detection is low and the micro deletions and the sub microscopic uh, changes could not be detected using karyotyping so uh, to overcome these limitations there is another technique uh, which is the which, which comes under the molecular cytogenetic uh, category that is called fish which is fluorescence in situ hybridization so in case of this technique first of all the dna uh, the dna of interest is denatured and also there are certain fluorescently labeled probes those probes are also uh, denatured and then the dna and the probes are allowed to hybridize together when uh, these are hybridized they are observed under the microscope and uh, and the specific changes like uh, if there is any deletion or duplication or there are any uh, changes in like lo uh, localization of the uh, specific chromosome arms those could be detected using fish there are various uh, types of fish techniques for example loco specific fish in which uh, the probes are uh, made such a way that they uh, will target a specific region on the uh, on the uh, chromosome uh, and only that region will be uh, seen under the microscope and another is the chromosome specific fish wherein specific arm of the chromosome is uh, labeled and visualized under the microscope uh, one another uh, uh, example is the cube fish so it it is used to stain the telomeres of the chromosome uh, so the uh, if a doctor uh, suspects some telomeric deletion or telomeric duplication uh, this uh, technique could be used to identify those very easily the last is the uh, last and the latest one is the multicolor fish which is uh, in which the each chromosome of the individual is stained with a different color so that is made possible by using different combinations of the four five basic colored probes and that helps to distinguish each and every chromosome of the individual so uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization is uh, quite common in case of uh, detection of uh, micro deletions or micro duplications in case of cancers like multiple myelomas or some uh, uh, in chronic myeloid leukemia so there is a very uh, common bcr bcr abl gene fusion that which is detected using fish uh, in case of chronic myeloid leukemia so uh, there are certain uh, advant advantages of using fish that is it could be detect it could be used to detect the sub microscopic level of uh, changes in the chromosome uh, as opposed to the karyotyping which could detect mostly the microscopic uh, changes uh, and uh, in case of fish we can uh, have specific probes for specific regions and hence changes in those specific regions could be detected also fish is uh, easily accessible and uh, little affordable uh, however there are certain limitations which is that uh, fish cannot be used for heterogeneous disease diagnosis like Uh, if we need some region specific probe so we need to know uh, that the disease uh, the, the uh, disease condition very uh, properly to design such probes and detect the uh, abnormality uh, also another limitation is, uh, comes from the technical point of view that is the non specific binding of the probes which could lead to background noise and hence the signal could be uh, noisy and not clearly detectable so uh, here comes another technique which is uh, more uh, res uh, of higher resolution that is the array uh, cgh which is a technique to detect copy number changes in the uh, specific regions of chromosome 
so under this technique the uh, test dna that is the dna of the patient or the individual uh, to be tested is differentially colored as compared to your control dna then uh, both of these differentially colored dnas are then mixed together and allowed to hybridize to an array so this array contains a uh, uh, already uh, probes which are representing the human genome so these test dna and the reference dna samples competitively bind competitively um, bind to these probes and there could be three different types of signals that could be observed so wherein there is a yellow signal that indicates that there is equal copy of the test and the reference dna for that uh, particular region and wherein uh, there is like more red or more green that it, uh, de uh, that depicts the loss or the gain of the uh, uh, specific dna uh, the test or the reference dna so the this this uh, array is then scanned and then the results are analyzed uh, using computer so uh, array cgs is very commonly uh, nowadays used to detect the micro deletion syndromes duplication syndromes or unbalanced translocation so uh, uh, in case of translocations there could be a category of balanced or unbalanced so unbalanced uh, does not lead to the similar chain uh, similar copy numbers so hence they could be detected using uh, array cgs so here in uh, an example of a uh, individual with a short stature and a silver russell syndrome like phenotype wherein there is a there is a micro deletion in the chromosome 12 which is very well captured by the array cgh te technique uh, now there are certain uh, advantages that it detects the copy number losses and gain in the entire genome so uh, there could there are variations to array cgs that we could either detect the changes in the entire genome or we could make it targeted also Uh, but there are certain limitations that uh, array cgh uh, cannot detect the copy neutral uh, variations like balanced translocation and inversions because in that case there is no change in the copy number of the uh, uh, of that specific site also uh, it is relatively of a uh, higher cost so uh, uh, for micro deletions and uh, micro deletion syndromes and duplication syndromes array cgh is a good technique to uh, take now another one is the multiple multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification technique which is uh, uh, called commonly called as mlpa so this technique is used to detect the structural variations in a specific region of the gene so here in the uh, target uh, dna is first denatured and a specific probe is hybridized to that target dna so what does the probe Uh, contain so probe is uh, de uh, designed in such a way that there is a hybridization sequence so which is complementary to the region of the interest so the, uh, along with uh, the hybridization sequence there is a forward primer on the forward pcr primer binding site on the uh, uh, left hand probe and there is a reverse pcr primer binding site along with the stuffer sequence on the right hand side probe so these probes are uh, hybridized are allowed to hybridize to the uh, tar uh, denature target dna so uh, and then there is a ligation of the probe so when the target dna is present in the individual these probes will come together bind and then ligate to form a single uh, product however when this target dna is absent in the individual uh, depicting there is a structural variation or deletion in the individual the probes will not be able to bind to come together and bind to the target dna and there will no there will not be any uh, uh, product formation in case of uh, deletion uh, so after the ligation of this probe uh, after the ligation of this probe the amplification takes place using the fluorescently labeled labeled primers so uh, the right hand side primer binding site becomes fluorescent label because there is a primer which is uh, labeled with a fluorescent tag now after this the uh, fragment analysis is undertaken wherein uh, different uh, so these probes will bind to different regions of the uh, different regions of the uh, selected target sequence and 
the probes le probe lens will be different for different regions so as you can see in this uh, image representative image that the probes are sorted on the basis of the lens that means the uh, uh, we can detect the deletion size on the basis of uh, the probe length also basically the length will help us to differentiate uh, between different regions of the uh, chromosome to which the probes bind and after that fragment separation uh, the analysis is undertaken now uh, the, the the common conditions or the common variations that during which mlp is undertaken are dmd so one of the example is dmd which is duquesne muscular dystrophy in which deletion of 79 exons could be easily detected using technique like mlp also uh, copy number changes in case of spinal muscular atrophy are very commonly identified using uh, mlpa uh, this technique was, could also be used for uh, detection of heterozygous carriers because uh, it could tell us the copy number uh, it could differentiate between the uh, homozygous and the heterozygous condition very easily for example here in the representative image we can see that in case of control sample there is no deletion or duplication because all the probes uh, for the specific location are showing the ratio of 1 however in case of the test sample we can see uh, that there is a heterozygous deletion in the specific region of uh, btk gene which is uh, because the ratio of the probe of the three of the probes is shown as 0.5 which shows that there is a heterozygous deletion when there is a homozygous deletion the probe ratio will become zero because there is no copy of that region compared to the control uh, control probe so there is a, a zero ratio for that for those three regions so similarly this could be uh, this, uh, similarly uh, if there is ratio of 2 that means there is a heterozygous duplication and if the ratio of 2.5 that indicates a homozygous duplication so uh, there are several advantages of mlp that it can detect local sp uh, locus specific deletions and duplications we can design the probe specifically to the locus and uh, we use that to uh, screen individuals also it is a multiplex pcr reaction so in only single pcr reaction we could pull in all the probe and uh, complete amplification of that region could take place so it is a high throughput technique which uh, which actually is uh, quite cheap so it occurs at a uh, low cost however there are certain limitations that it cannot detect copy neutral changes again and it is very sensitive to impurity so if if there is a little bit of control dna contamination in the test sample or or vice versa that would lead to aberrant results uh, in case of mlp also it is very sensitive to variants that are present at the probe binding site so uh, it could be very well possible that there are variants present in the individual at the probe binding site so mlpa uh, is very sensitive to those kind of uh, variants uh, now the next technique that is uh, uh, that has more resolution as compared to uh, the discussed technique is the sanger sequencing so it is used to detect alterations at the Uh, change uh, alterations or changes in the sequence of the dna so as we have discussed that uh, there could be two types of changes in the sequence of the dna that could be point mutations or indels so sanger could be used to uh, identify both of these so uh, the principle is that uh, first the dna target dna is denatured and then it is allowed to uh, to be amplified using a set of primer uh, and also the dideoxynucleotides so what happens is whenever there is a incorporation of a dideoxynucleotide the reaction stops there there is no further addition of the nucleotides to that uh, to that region so this uh, principle is utilized in sanger and uh, it is uh, uh, and after the pcr amplification there are different size fragments which are produced because certain uh, fragments would be uh, stopped at smaller size uh, and uh, based upon the sequence and certain fragments would be stopped at the uh, larger size so 
we can easily differentiate between the size of these fragments using a very sensitive capillary electrophoresis uh, technique which 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 can uh, like resolve all these fragments in a uh, capillary gel and after these the uh, this the results are uh, observed in uh, like results are observed in the form of chromatogram which depicts the sequence of the uh, target region so sanger sequencing is uh, commonly used for detecting single point mutations like in case of sickle cell anemia thalassemia and also for uh, small indels like there is a specific deletion at 508 base in the cystic fibrosis so as you can see in the representative image there is a wild type anemia which shows a peak of a uh, single peak uh, single peak at Uh, that indi uh, that uh, that indicates that it is a homozygous individual for the wild type allele. Uh, now, mutant allele in case of heterozygous, there would be two different peaks that are observed, and in case of mutant allele for homozygous, there is a different colored peak with but a single peak. So, this type of uh, chromatogram could easily help us to detect the Known point mutations in case of single uh, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, cystic fibrosis. So these type of diseases could be diagnosed using uh, this technique called Sanger sequencing. Uh, there are advantages that it is used for identification of a uh, single nucleotide changes, which which is at the DNA sequence level. So from sub microscopic level, uh, we have now come to the DNA sequence level. and it is a very cost effective te technique for small number of targets uh, 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 but there are certain limitations that only specific region of uh, regions of interest could be amplified and sequenced and also sanger is little uh, low throughput and uh, the scalability is also not very high so uh, another technique which is very highly uh, scalable and high throughput is the next generation sequencing so in case of next generation sequencing the uh, sample is uh, taken and the dna is extracted from the sample after that there is a, pro a step procedure called library preparation under which uh, the dna are denatured uh, for uh, uh, like uh, for ligation of specific unique sequences that are called as adapters to each of the uh, uh, individual individuals dna and then after that library preparation there is cluster generation of this uh, specific dna fragment so this happens on uh, certain glass chips which we known uh, which are known as flow cells so on uh, flow cells the clusters are generated and bridge uh, through bridge amplification multiple copies of the sequence are generated and then Uh, this was followed by this is followed by sequencing uh, using sequencers like uh, uh, under uh, uh, illumina if you look at we have uh, different sequences of different throughput and different uh, uh, time durations so uh, what are the types of next generation sequencing technique that are available currently that is the uh, whole first is the whole genome sequencing wherein if we have a genome with uh, containing the coding and the known coding regions as depicted in the representative image we can say that the whole genome sequencing will sequence all components of the genome of an individual so it is a sequencing of whole genome uh, basically and the non coding region variations could be easily detected using whole genome sequencing also uh, we could identify the novel genes or novel coding or known coding variations uh, in in the individual uh, another another variation to uh, uh, another variation for next generation sequencing is a whole exome sequencing wherein only the exonic regions or uh, specific regions of the uh, whole genome of the uh, of the genome of the individual are sequenced so here in uh, the protein coding region that is the exons of uh, of genes are sequenced so uh, variations in the coding region could only be detected the variations in non coding regions are majorly missed in case of whole genome sequencing and also novel genes and novel coding variations can be uh, found uh, but novel non coding variations can be missed out 
so uh, and another variation is the candidate gene panel wherein uh, only specific genes or only a, a set of specific region in the genome are sequenced because um, that that set could be uh, could have been prepared uh, by uh, looking at the disease uh, uh, to diagnose the disease there could be a set of specific genes which are causal for that disease so only those causal genes could be sequenced in case of candidate gene panel however there is limitation that uh, variations that are lying outside those specific genes uh, those um, genes could not be detected and also novel genes could not be detected we can we are only limited to the genes that we are sequencing so based upon the application or the uh, question in hand we can choose among which technique you have to apply and uh, next generation sequencing is uh, used for detection of novel small uh, nucleot novel or known small nucleotide variations indels or structural variations like insertion deletions duplications so this is a snapshot of a tool which is known as integrative genomic viewer genomic viewer so here you can see that the uh, reads of a uh, next generation sequencing experiment for an uh, region in, in an individual are clearly depicted uh, so this the reads uh, show us the actual coverage of the, those different size uh, sides in the uh, chromosome of the uh, uh, sorry in the dna of that individual so there are uh, advantages that uh, next generation sequencing could be used to sequence or detect any single nucleotide variation or most of the structural variations also it is a very very high throughput and uh, it has a very fast turnaround time as compared to other techniques like uh, low throughput techniques like sanger and lp and uh, however there are certain limitations that uh, next generation sequ next generation sequencing is highly uh, it is very less cost effective and also it is not easily accessible and also uh, it requires a lot of expertise uh, for analyzing the uh, the genome or the exomes or the uh, resulting panels of the uh, individual so uh, this is all about all the major techniques that could be used for uh, genetic testing uh, so here is a comparison of all the techniques that we uh, that are uh, present that are available for uh, different types of testing for example uh, like karyotyping we can have a size detection limit of 5 mb to 15 mb ranging up to next generation sequencing which can detect changes at one base pair resolution so uh, we have uh, we have now tests which can detect mutations or alterations at G chromosome level that is a microscopic level at sub microscopic level or even at the dna sequence level and we can see that in case of uh, different techniques what are the regions that are covered for example uh, karyotyping cgh and fish and uh, next generation sequencing could cover the whole genome however mlp and sanger are specific uh, to a region of interest and uh, there are certain advantages of each of the techniques that uh, the type of uh, variations that they could detect and there are limitations that uh, certain techniques could not be utilized for certain types of uh, uh, certain types of variations for example if you look at cgh we cannot detect the copy neutral changes so if there is some copy neutral change we have to undergo certain other type of uh, technique so based on based on the uh, understanding or the uh, phenotyping of the uh, phenotyping of the disease of the individual we can choose among which technique uh, or which uh, genetic test has to be performed for uh, for example if the uh, if there is a, if a disease suspect a disease has been suspected like down syndrome so for that disease we can, we, we can directly go to karyotyping and detect if there is a uh, like change in the chromosome number however if there is a disease like sickle cell anemia which is a single base resolution uh, change we cannot do karyotyping and detect that change for that we have to undergo sanger sequencing or the next generation sequencing so uh, based upon the uh, type of the disease that is there or the type of uh, testing that has to be performed for example prenatal or newborn 
we have to choose the disease. Uh, we have to choose the test on the on that basis. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Hope this uh, this helps to understand the various type of genetic techniques that are present. Uh, thank you.